Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 29 of Catalyst Shoujo. So, last we left off, we ended up um, meeting that, hanging out with Rune and Emmy on the rooftop again. And we were, we also just got surprised by Kenji. So, let's continue. Before I can open my door, however, I am suddenly intercepted by Kenji, who has just exploded out of his room in a flurry of papers. Hey, we need to talk. These rooftop shenanigans of yours, man. Why you've got to stop. Oh. You're running around on the rooftop with, with the limbless wonders. They're women, man. You're gonna get yourself killed running around like that. I don't follow. Kenji sighed and adjusts his glasses before what could be understood as an attempt to explain himself patiently. Look, we're friends. So I'm telling you this for your own good. If I were gonna kill someone, I'd do it by throwing them off a roof and making it look like an accident. And if I thought of it, you can be sure they thought of it too. But crafty. Almost as crafty as I am. I'll see. Good! I'm glad we have this chat. Only 500 loot again. I'm sorry. I need to get a drink, man. I've been inside all day and back. The cat has been compromised. I'm sure you know. Like, they're putting chemicals in the water. Turning the freaking frogs. Yeah, that looks good, man. <laughs> so some funny stuff. And, uh, what's the other Floor out in the water, too, that. It's pretty funny. But yeah, continue on. So I need to stock up on something canned. Got it. But to do that, I'll need 500 yen. And since I've just saved your life, my time and your advice. Can at least spare me 500 yen. And that's all I can go away. 500 yen is a bargain. I handed the money over to Kenji who nods in things and dashes off down the hallway, but not before he locks his door. What an exhausting person. I'll better go in in case he, in case he changes his mind. Hmm? As I close the door, my heel taps against something lying on the floor. It's a brightly coloured rectangle piece of paper. Ah, this must be the something Misha was not mentioned before. Probably our student council lawyer put its useful word under the door. However, when I pick it up, I find I couldn't have been more wrong. Someone actually wrote to me an old, me an old fashioned handwritten paper letter. Who bothers doing something like that this day and age? Yet, as unlikely as the prospect of receiving one sounds, this is definitely a letter I have in my hands. I was planning on finishing my homework, getting some dinner done, and then going to bed in order to be ready for tomorrow morning's run. However, the letter has naturally caught my interest. I sit at my desk to examine it properly. It's the first piece of mail I've received here at Yamaku, so it feels real special, even if it was something as rare as a handwritten letter. What causes me even more trepidation is the name of the sender written neatly on the back of the envelope. Yamaku. I have no idea why she would write to me, and I haven't been in contact with anyone from my old school since I transferred. And Iwanako is the last person I'd want to write me a letter. Um, the last time I saw her, Iwanako, it was terribly awkward, embarrassingly so. She came to my hospital room, filled me an apple out with courtesy, and then pra we practically sat in silence for half an hour. She said goodbye, and didn't look at me in the eye when she closed the door. Might have been a natural end for us. Uh, to the series of visits that we were, that were probably pretty painful for both of us. Every time she visited me in the hospital, I wanted to talk to her. And something stopped me every time. Every time that I didn't speak, made the next time even harder. She looked so guilty that I didn't want to say anything that might upset her, and I could never figure out the right words to say. I think Veronica blames herself for my heart attack. That's ridiculous, of course, but. Knowing it and believing it are two very different things. I told her it wasn't her fault. She nodded and I really think she understood that if it hadn't been that the sooner or later, something else would have made my heart give out. Yet, she looked so hopelessly sad every time she opened the door and entered my room. So I never managed to say the things I wanted to say. In the end, that might have hurt her even more. Carefully. I opened the envelope and draw out the folded letter from within. Dear Misa, how are you? I hope you're well and happy at your new school. Everyone here misses you. Almost all of our second year classes got 
book to go through the last three ones for the final year. So we're pretty comfortable right now for the beginning of the year. I'm sure you would have been assigned to this class as well. The mood among the third year seems to be very anxious about the final exams. Even though they are so far away, the teachers are battering us about it all the time. Even old Mr. Tucky Barber, who is, by the way, a homeroom teacher this year, would you believe it? I was sure he'd retire after the second year, but here he is, nagging everyone about studying for the exam. I think things like that are the main reason why the mood among third years is so nervous. I must admit that I'm somehow losing confidence in myself as well. Even though I've always fared reasonably well in exams. It's so weird to think we're already seniors, isn't it? Time has flown really uh, time has really flown past. I wonder where it went. The new first year seems so young and somehow so innocent. I keep wondering if I was like them in my first year. I've been feeling this nostalgic uh, feeling nostalgic like this for the whole first trimester. There are other things I want to say. I'm writing to you because I felt that, that I should have said after the incident back in real life. Winter, sorry. I really regret that I wasn't able to say it, uh, say them in person, and I have no excuse for it. Yeah, I think I've had quite enough of this. I'll crumple up the sheet of paper and toss it across the room. Buying is off, so all that rolls under my nightstand instead of going into my waste basket. That was an apology for abandoning me, except I don't know that I really need it in the anymore at this point. The hospital seems like a lifetime ago, and here, now, I've got other things on my mind. Emmy for starters, but it wasn't great to be abandoned during my stay, but it's nothing that I'm worried about anymore. In fact, I hadn't even thought about the hospital in what feels like forever until this letter came in. It's almost annoying to have received it. I've got exams to study for myself. I have no time for the past. Now, about that homework. We yeah. don't come into the past, but if you can learn lessons, but definitely use it to learn lessons from your mistake. Even like continuing on. So, what's the plan for today anyway? I'm waiting patiently in the hall. Way of the girls' dormitory just now saw Emmy and Green through. Emmy is apparently helping Green get dressed. I suppose that makes perfect sense, as I've no idea how Green would have dressed otherwise. Picnic. Picnic? That's what I said. Sounds pretty exciting. I know, right? Green shoes at this moment to make more relation. It to on my way over to spot the sunshine of the early morning. The afternoon, the afternoon seems to have taken a turn for the blue. There's an heaviness in the air as well, but there are usually air with a rainstorm. I wonder if I should have pulled my umbrella. She's got a point. I mean, you sure that you still only want to risk getting caught up in the rain? I don't even know what I've got to ask you. He pops out a room for him into the hallway, looking shocked that I'd even suggest camping on our plans. Of course. What? The threat of rain supposed to stop me? I can't help but bring up her belligerent response. It's almost like she's daring to rain to come. Mother Nature was walking down the street. I think Emmy would probably start a fight with her. Or at least try to go for a race. In fact, Emmy seems almost aggressively cheerful today. Out into the hallway, collecting her usual self. Well, then, are we ready to go? I'm ready. Rin nods and says a single word. Basket. Beg your pardon? The basket? It's in Emmy's room. You should carry it. Emmy claps her hands to her mouth, embarrassed. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot all about it. I say, Rin. Listen to her and emerges with what looked like a very well stocked picnic basket. As she agilizes me, I know that it feels heavy enough to need one. Two. Good lord, how much food did she pack? What was the point? Where'd she get the money for all this? So, we set her head out. Yeah. We give her a 
one more than we had out the dormitory. I can't help but frown when I notice how brave a scar's got an in the ten minutes old inside. Still, he does not seem concerned by such petty concerns as the corner of the sky. She's positively skipped as we walk, which reminds me where we're going. This brings Emmy up short as she shoots me an embarrassed thought. You know, I haven't really thought of that. What do you think, Ethan? Well, there's a spot where we ate during the festival that might be a nice place to leave the campus for a while. However, I'm not too sure if there are any good places to do that now. Um, just as I'm about to open my mouth, Rin unexpectedly, unexpectedly interjected the suggestion. There's a part of the town in the art shop. Great idea, Rin. I totally forgot all about that place. Christ, just a Do you know I'll get there, Rin? But what the uh, lead on Rin. Three of us quickly make our way off the campus and take the road down into town. The basket's a bit heavy, I the party's close by. We pass the art supply we store, and Rin's showing her pace slightly as we go by. Emmy notices Rin's change of pace and stops. Do you want to go in, Rin? Rin shrugs. Flutter of a smile on Rin's face, quickly replaced by her, replaced by her usual expression. Life's so uncertain, but on this, I'm pretty sure. Nice of you to offer. But it's not like I'm going to carry the basket. I'll bet he doesn't mind it anyway, right? Oh, of course not. This is all for an heavy load. Off the left for emphasis. Bench. Let me start with the snow. The snort of laughter by pointing to the hardware which we've suddenly arrived. Oh, I remember this place. I ran into you here about one time, didn't I, Rin? Rin's eyebrow where it raises slightly. Maybe. I'm unwilling to say for certain, one way or the other. Remember, it's a tricky thing, you know? Well, I'll be. We made it in one piece after all. Some, some still know how to be seen, but neither is Emmy or but neither is Emmy or we're in the scene tonight. We find we find a spot to sit on the grass and I'll set the basket down gracefully. That's, there's a surprising amount of food prepared. Maybe we were supposed to be joined by some of Emmy's teammates for, for something. I'm starving. Nice, it's nice uh, CGI. And, yep, yeah, just a couple of seconds. Yeah, it's nice one. So, yeah, I guess uh, that's it. So, let's continue. I'm starving. Thank you. She attacked the food it's as if she had nothing. She'd eaten nothing for years. I'm just reaching for food myself and I feel the first drop of rain land on the back of my hand. Uh oh. Wolf for whoever's not going to co cooperate with us after all. Emmy glares at the sky as if it alone, uh, as if that alone will hold back the sky. I very, I very nearly believe she can do it. It's one heck of a glare. Be better cooperate. You hear me, Sky? Stop! You stop that rain in right this instant. The sky don't seem inclined to listen to her, despite the commanding tone she's taken with it. Instead, the rain seems to increase. Rin wrinkles her nose in distaste at this turn of events. Regrettable. What do you mean? Rin shrugs. I'd pain this if I weren't, weren't out here. It's a shame to miss it, though. Well, she doesn't seem angry or annoyed, just a little disappointed. I think this is where I ended for the time being here. Thank you for everyone, uh, thank you for watching and
I'll catch you again soon. Goodbye.